Up next, folks, we head to Albany and home to what some recruiting services call the top-ranked recruit in the U.S. Mm. Defensive tackle Trent Thompson spent his high school career feasting on opposing quarterbacks for Westover High School in southwest Georgia. He's six foot three, 313 pounds, racking up 84 tackles his senior season, including 36 for a loss. Uh, he tallied 21 sacks during his high school playing days. A five-star recruit was a 2015 U.S. Army All-American Bowl selection. The USA Today naming him the National Defensive Player of the Year, and he was All-State, of course, here in Georgia. As for his future plans, well, the top-ranked player in the country will be a Bulldog. Thompson committing to the University of Georgia back in August. And although he took a few other official visits, he stuck with his pledge and signed with the Dogs today. Well, Mike, quite an addition to Jeremy Pruitt's defense. And right now we'd like to get the take of AJC recruiting expert Michael Carvel on Big Trent Thompson. Yes, yeah, so Michael, there are so many great players here in Georgia and, of course, nationwide. So how did Thompson end up ranked number one in the land by some of these recruiting services? Uh, these receivers and these running backs and cornerbacks, they are a... Yeah, I mean, these receivers, these running backs, uh, these cornerbacks, they are a dime a dozen, but it's very rare to find defensive linemen who are six foot three, 300 pounds. And Trent Thompson, what the scouts love about him is that he's a 300 pounder that runs like a 200 pounder. And if there are two guys in this 2015 class from the state of Georgia who are going to, in, to the NFL that I would say right now, it would be Trent Thompson and Mitch Hyatt, the offensive tackle from North Gwinnett, who was headed to Clemson. And both these guys, you know what? They are not drama queens. They both committed early, stuck to their word, and recruiting's over with them. But hey, these other guys, the drama queens, they make it all interesting for, that, for us, I guess. All right, so a rarity indeed, uh, having that big 6'3", 300-pounder heading to Athens as the number one mm -hmm. player, number one offensive lineman, or defensive lineman, rather, in the country. And DJ Shockley rejoins us now in shock. Uh, Trent Thompson, uh, obviously has the talent and now heads to Georgia. Defensive line coach Tracy Rocker, associate head coach, gets to mold quite a talent. Will Thompson make an impact this season as a true freshman for the Bulldogs? I would say absolutely yes. You look at what they lost. They lost Ray Drew. They lost Thorne. Mm -hmm. they, uh, they lost also Big Thorne up front, Toby Johnson. They yep. got a couple key guys up front that they're missing. He has to come in and play a key role. He has a great first step, plays with a lot of energy. He's quick. He's fast. He has those quick, twitch muscles. You usually don't hear that on a D lineman, but he has a quick twitch muscle that makes him fast and loose about the ball, and he makes plays with his hands. So I think he will come in and make a huge impact early for this University of Georgia uh, defense just because they lost so many guys, and they need a big guy of his size to come in and make some plays. And we've seen some of the top number one overall recruits in the country the last few years on the D line making an immediate impact. Yep. Obviously, a Robert Kim mm -hmm. uh, coming out of Grayson High School. A Jadavian Clowney was the number one overall uh, player. And those guys right away in college, you know, I guess if you're D-line, you're athletic and big and fast, yeah. uh, it's a good, good, good recipe to cause some havoc. And, and George is known for putting out some big defensive linemen. You go back all the way to, to, to Big Seymour, you got Stroud, you got of late uh, Geno Atkins. I mean, you got some guys coming from the University of Georgia that has played at a high level at the defensive line position. And I think he's going to fall into that same mold of big-time players making plays and starting and playing early. All right, Chuck, we'll check in with you in just a bit. You know, Thompson isn't the only uh, Georgia high school player we will be looking to give Jeremy Pruitt's defense a big boost in Athens for the next few years. Four of the state's top defensive ends will all suit up and play for the Bulldogs as well. Tucker's Jonathan Ledbetter ranked as the eighth best player in Georgia this past season after brutalizing offensive lines in the state's largest classification. He originally committed to Alabama and Nick Saban, but he changed his mind after his older brother joined the Bulldog football team following a few seasons of NCAA Division II basketball. Ledbetter is an early enrollee, meaning he's already graduated from Tucker and is at UGA right now taking classes. Joining Ledbetter in Athens is Mazes Natrez Patrick. He enrolled in classes in January as well. Patrick was the 10th ranked player in the state and helped lead Mays to the state championship game this past season. Now, Patrick could be a player, folks, uh, in a few positions for the Bulldogs that can make an immediate impact and will likely spend some time at the linebacker position. Langston Hughes' DeAndre Walker had 21 sacks as a junior. He followed that up with another 23 and a half sacks as a senior. Mm. That's amazing. You know, throw in 10 forced fumbles, and it's easy to see why the Bulldogs staff wanted him in Athens. Walker played in the U.S. Army All-American Bowl, and he was the 6A Player of the Year in Region 3. Walker will join Ledbetter and Patrick as members of the Bulldogs' 2015 class. And how about Stevenson's Chauncey Rivers? He's going to head to Athens as well. The four-star defensive end originally committed to South Carolina, but changed his mind about a year ago. 
He called Georgia his dream school. That dream now realized. Rivers will play for the Bulldogs after signing his national letter of intent this morning. All right, so DJ Shockley rejoins us. There's certainly a lot of firepower now to add to that defensive side of the football uh, for the Bulldogs, who really improved under Jeremy Pruitt at the end of that season. Uh, Pruitt showed that he's not afraid to play true yeah. freshman. I mean, Dominic Sanders, for one, mm -hmm. comes to mind. Played very well. Two interceptions in the belt bowl. Um, how do you see these guys helping, and will any of them help the Bulldogs in 2015? You already mentioned Thompson. Will, mm -hmm. what about the guys that Zach just mentioned? Another guy to add to that list is Lorenzo Carter. Yes. Came in yes. uh, as a freshman, had four or five sacks. He did an outstanding job. But all those guys have a collection of things they can do really well. You talk about Natrez Patrick can be all around the field. He can play linebacker. You're going to need that. You're, you're missing Ramique. Wilson, you're also losing Amalo Herrera, who mm -hmm. both led the you know, SEC last couple years in tackles. So yep. both those guys are gone. You're going to need some guys to fill their void. All those guys are fast. They can get up the field. They can make plays, and they can run. And that's what you need in SEC, especially with all these running backs and they spread you out. You need guys who can stay on the field for three downs and be able to rush the passer and also get in coverage. And I think all three of those guys had that ability. Uh, let's now bring back in Michael Carvella. Michael, Georgia had a great morning for signing. He's picking up four commitments, including a Westlake's Daquan Hawkins and Kirby Choates of, of Tri-Cities. But the Bulldogs missed out on the big fish, Macon County's Roquan Smith, picking UCLA over Georgia in that situation. What happened right there? Yeah, Zach, I knew you couldn't make it through one show without mentioning Robert Kimdichie's name. I mean, <laughs> that has to be your all-time favorite player. I guess it's mine. But uh, And Anthony, you're celebrating Roquan Smith going to UCLA, but guess what? He hasn't signed the papers yet. It's the biggest story in recruiting right now. Mm. So, as you mentioned, he committed on ESPN. He's the linebacker from uh, Macon County. Everybody thought he was going to Georgia. He committed to UCLA, but guess what? He did not sign the papers. I don't know what's going to happen with this over the next few hours, uh, is he going to go to UCLA? Is he going to switch his mind and go to Georgia? It's just a crazy situation. Like a few years ago, I don't know if you remember, Josh Harvey Clemens, he committed on TV to Georgia on signing day on ESPN, and his father or his, his, his grandfather would not sign off on his letter of intent because I think he wanted him to go to Florida. So uh, never a boring moment in recruiting. Yeah, never a boring moment. And again, uh, for those who may have just actually logged on Michael Carville saying that Roquan Smith whom uh, on national television said he was going to UCLA has not signed the papers mm. as of yet so again you never know well one receiver who did not get away from the Bulldogs is Jason right, Stanley so the 6'2 200 pound Creekside so Seminole you, receiver towards ACL in the first game of his senior season but the Bulldogs told Stanley they still wanted him Stanley did take a late trip to UCF at Central Florida but he did indeed sign with the Bulldogs on this day. So, who else is headed to Athens? How about Marist's Sage Harden ranking as the 50th best offensive tackle in the country? He no doubt has plenty of run blocking experience playing at the Atlanta area private school, but may have to spend some time working on his pass pro. Harden had offers from several other ACC and SEC schools, but the 6'7 blocker follows in the footsteps of offensive tackle Kendall Baker, who signed with Georgia out of Marist last year. Lakeside High School's Rashad Roundtree ranked as the fifth best safety in America while playing for the Augusta Area School. His strengths include his range, skills and run support, and physical play. Roundtree had offers from the biggest SEC and ACC schools, took official visits to both Georgia and national champion Ohio State. Grayson's Justin Young, verbally committed to the Bulldogs back in March, made it official today. The six, three and a half inch defensive tackle will learn from one of the best to do it himself. We mentioned D-line coach, associate head coach Tracy Rocker. Young played defensive end on the offensive line, tight end and fullback for the Rams over the course of the season, and his dad is former NFL linebacker Andre Young. Here are a few more Georgia Bulldogs. Daquan Hawkins, Zach mentioned him a moment ago, helped West Westlake's Lions get their first taste of success in the state playoffs. Tay Crowder was going to Georgia Southern, but instead received a late invitation from Athens, so he will be a Bulldog. Sam Madden coming south from New Jersey, and Pat Allen Franklin is another new toy for a new O-line coach, Rob Sale, to tutor. Yeah, Anthony, it's been quite a busy day for the Bulldogs in Athens. Many fans made their way to the Buttsmere building there to cheer on the dogs. They've been roaring and barking as each new national letter of intent arrived. Channel 2's Chuck Dowdle is there as well. He's monitoring all of the signing of the action for us. Good afternoon, Chuck. 
National Signing Day for college football across the country, that is huge. But believe me, it's bigger nowhere than right here in Athens, Georgia, where head coach Mark Rick stepped in front of a big crowd of Georgia football fans to tell them how the day had gone for the dogs. I think there's a, I, I do think there's a lot of good news on the way today. I'm sure not, I'm sure not everything's going to go exactly the way we hope, but uh, a lot of, lot of very positive uh, things I think are on the way. The number, you know what? I don't know what the number's going to end up being. We're going to find out. And the paperwork will continue to come in here at the University of Georgia throughout the day. In fact, by the end of the day, it's expected that the dogs will have a class somewhere between 25 and 30 signees. And the class should be ranked once again, as has become almost the norm under head coach Mark Rick, in the national top 10. In Athens with the Georgia Bulldogs, I'm Chuck Dowdle for Action Sports. All right, Chuck, thanks as always. And let's bring back in Michael Carvel of the Atlanta Journal-Constitution. Michael, give us those final thoughts on this year's Bulldogs recruiting class. I mean, final thoughts. You, you heard Mark Rick right there. He sounded clueless. Who knows how all this <laughs> stuff is going to unfold? You got four guys out there right now. You got Nick Buchanan. He's going to decide between Florida and Georgia at two. You have Van Jefferson. He was a committed to Georgia, switched to Ole Miss, and now he may go back to Georgia. And the big one, of course, at 6 p.m. is Terry Godwin. He's the five-star who's been committed to Georgia for a year but could flip to Auburn. So I can't give you final thoughts right now. Uh, all I can tell you is you'll probably see me somewhere in Buckhead tonight after all this stress. This, what a crazy day, guys. <laughs> oh, he, nobody drops some knowledge like Michael Carvel. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, speaking of someone who's got some knowledge, the man who played the game on the college level and, of course, in the NFL with the Falcons, DJ Shockley, once again joining us. Let's talk about these players, DJ, in, in Athens. They might have uh, their impact uh, f next year, moving mm -hmm. forward, and over the course of their college careers. You like what you see so far? I do. I, I think it's a, a well-rounded group. They got guys at all different spots, especially defense, where they know they have to show up a lot of things defensive front wise. And if you get God winning here, that's going to solidify some things offensively. I remember going back when um, my recruiting class, we had Thomas Davis, we had David Pollock, we had Greg Blue. We had a lot of quality guys who made a lot of plays for us. And I think this is going to be another class to look for another two or three years. I'm going to say this is a productive class that started to play early and played often.